Good morning, Thailand, and welcome to the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Seattle and Tacoma, a critical link in trade with the U.S. Before we get started, we'd like to make sure that all of you know how to use the Zoom interpretation function. ก่อนที่เราจะเริ่มกันนะคะก็อยากจะขอให้มั่นใจว่าทุกคนใช้ฟังก์ชันของซูมที่เป็นฟังก์ชันลามได้นะครับนักสายพลีส Next slide please This conference has English Thai interpretation If you need interpretation support please follow the instructions below งานสัมมนานี้นะคะมีการแปลล่ามจากอังกฤษไทยค่ะต้องการการแปลนะครับกรุณาปฏิบัติตามคำแนะนำเลยครับ Please make sure to use the latest Zoom version to ensure that you have all meeting features, especially Thai interpretation function. Next slide, please. If you have Zoom client installed, please make sure that it's updated by clicking on your account avatar and Check for updates. Next slide, please. Contact Zoom technical support. Raise hand to chat with panelists. Raise questions to panelists. สามารถถามคำถามโดยตรงกับผู้ร่วมเสวนาได้เลยนะครับทาง Q&A. Listen to interpretation. แล้วก็สามารถกดที่ลูกโลกเพื่อฟังการล่ามได้ครับ. Next slide, please. Upon clicking interpretation, please choose one of the three following options. พอกดที่ลูกโลกแล้วนะครับก็จะมีทางเลือกสามทาง. Choose off or preferred language if you understand both. Choose English if you only understand English. Choose Thai if you only understand Thai. If you want to listen to interpreter only, choose mute original audio. ถ้าต้องการจะฟังเสียงล่ามเท่านั้นก็สามารถกดปิดเสียงออริจินอลได้ครับ Next slide please Welcome again to the Northwest Seaport Alliance Seattle and Tacoma a critical link in trade with the US I'm Michael Fowler with the World Trade Center Tacoma your host and co-organizer of today's event Thank you to the Northwest Seaport Alliance team for suggesting the timely topics to be covered today and for their guidance and support for this webinar. I'd like to acknowledge the assistance of our Thai partners, the Royal Thai Consulate General Los Angeles, the Thai Trade Center of North America, and the Thai National Shippers Council. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Port of Tacoma, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, the Tacoma Pierce Chamber of Commerce, and of course, I'd like to express my appreciation to our organizers, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Without the cooperation, assistance, and support of these great organizations, this event would not have been possible. Next slide, please. These are our speakers and their topics for today. The Northwest Seaport Alliance Chief Commercial and Strategy Officer, Tong Zhu, will help kick off the event with introductory remarks. I will discuss the US-Thailand trade relationship, senior account executive at the freight forwarder, Kerry Apex, will discuss US-Thailand shipping and logistics. And we do have a, uh, a slight um, change in the lineup today, unfortunately, uh, CEO of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, John Wolf, has had a emergency, and I'm afraid that he can't join us today. He sends his apologies. Covering for John will be Tongju, uh, Chief Commercial and Strategy Officer. 
Tong will cover the overview of the Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway. And then uh, Tong will cover the, the uh, Northwest Seaport Alliance trade with Thailand, import supply chain and landside services, and ocean and rail services. As time permits, we will answer questions at the end. Please feel free to write them at any time in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. First, I'd like to welcome the Northwest Seaport Alliance Chief Commercial and Strategy Officer, Tongju, to the screen. Thank you, Mike. I, I hope you all can hear me all right. It's fine, I can hear you. Okay, on behalf of the Northwest Seaport Alliance and our CEO, John Wolf, um, I wanted to welcome you to today's program. As an international seaport serving the Trans-Pacific trade, free and robust trade is vital to our port and Washington state. Thailand is a key trading partner for our gateway. We greatly value the business relationships we have built with shippers and supply chain partners in Asia, and especially Thailand. For those of you new to the Seaport Alliance, thanks for making time uh, to get to know our gateway. Uh, if, we are, if we were able to visit you in Thailand, I would be um, uh, serving you a cup of coffee, but since we're doing it virtually, I hope you have a cup of coffee, coffee, a coffee or tea in your hand. We're excited about the opportunity to introduce our facilities and the many advantages to using Seattle Tacoma Gateway. With that, I turn it back to Mike. Thank you, Tong. Uh, next slide, please. Thailand and the US have long been close allies, diplomatic partners, and trading partners. In fact, this relationship goes back to 1818. This graph expresses very well the rapid growth of Thai exports to the US over the past several years. Total trade last year was just over $60 billion, which is 23% up from the 49 billion in 2020. The US is Thailand's largest export market with a total value of exports to the US of 47.3 billion in 2021. The trend for U.S. exports over the past 10 years also shows continuing and steady growth. Last year, uh, it stood at 12.7 billion. Next slide, please. Here's a look at what the U.S. and Thailand are buying and selling from each other by value. Jonathan, the next presenter, will give you a look at imports by volume. You'll see that there is a difference. Imports to the U.S. grew by more than 60% over 10 years, while exports grew by more than 20%. In fact, I'll be happy to share a list of the top 10 U.S. Thai imports and exports, as well as the top 10 for Washington State by value over the past 10 years. If you'd like to receive this, please just send an email at info at wtcta.org info at wtcta.org, World Trade Center Tacoma. Let's look more closely at what we'll call our trade stars. Those items that show the fastest growth, highlighting business opportunities. Next slide, please. The top stars for import over the past 10 years were industrial machinery, including computers, which more than doubled, rubber and articles made of rubber, which also more than doubled, vehicles and parts grew by more than three and a half times, and optical, medical, and surgical equipments more than doubled. For exports, it was mineral fuel and oil and the like. It shot up almost eight times, Vehicles and parts increased almost five and a half times. Oil seeds and miscellaneous grains grew nearly three times. And food industry residues and waste and prepared animal field for feed, for example, DDGs, 
more than doubled. What are the prospects for U.S. Thai trade in the coming years? Next slide, please. The increasing trend in trade mentioned earlier was despite the previous U.S. administration's focus and concern about trade balances. It was this concern that in part led in 2019 and 2020 to the suspension of about half of the favorable trade preferences that the U.S. grants Thailand under the generalized system of preferences, the GSP. The current administration appears not to be as focused on trade balance, which generally is favorable for U.S. Thai trade prospects. Also, the Biden administration is more focused on multilateralism in trade policy. Although I don't think the US will be joining the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership or CPTPP in the near future. There are some encouraging signs that we're taking steps in that direction. As you may know, Thailand will host the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Meeting or APEC in, of the 21 Asia Pacific economies in November of this year. You may not know that it was announced a couple of weeks ago that the US will be hosting APEC in 2023. At the meeting, it's expected that the US will promote the establishment of the IPEF, or the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. The purpose of the framework is to foster trade by encouraging the setting of standardized rules in trade and technology. Although less ambitious than the TPP or the CPTPP, it is hoped that IPEF will be a more viable way to foster trade than the earlier TPP was, which was opposed by US trade unions, for example. More specifically, the IPEF will focus on trade facilitation, standards for digital economy and technology, supply chain resiliency, decarbonization and clean energy, infrastructure and worker standards. Less than a month ago, the White House also came out with its new Indo-Pacific strategy. It also outlined several trade-related commitments that it is hoped will have a positive impact on trade between our countries. First, You'll notice that Southeast Asia is truly at the heart of the document. It includes pledges for more foreign direct investment. It also underlines the focus of the IPEF with a commitment to facilitate high standards trade, govern the digital economy, catalyze investment in transparent high standards infrastructure and build digital connectivity. It mentions a commitment to the ASEAN Regional Forum and it's seeking new ministerial level engagements in the region, promising 100 million in new joint initiatives. It also commits to support ASEAN students coming to the US to study through the Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative to promote closer ties with the next generation of regional leaders. By the way, Guess which state has the largest percentage of ASEAN students as a percentage of the overall foreign student body? Next slide, please. You probably guessed it, it's Washington. See the chart to the right, top right. The relative percentage of ASEAN students in Washington is higher than anywhere else in the US. This is one of many soft drivers that bring business opportunities for Thai companies here in the, in the Northwest. Studies show that having an ethnic network in a region promotes trade between that region and the home country of the ethnic population. Statistics are not available for all our regional cities, but Seattle has the sixth largest Thai population of any city in the US. 
Our region also has a strong network of organizations that support this population, ranging from the Thai Association of Washington State to the Thai Student Associations at our major universities. In addition to these organizations, the World Trade Center Tacoma is connected to a web of other support organizations that welcome overseas firms. This include local chambers, as well as economic development organizations at the city, county, state, and federal levels. The lower right photo uh, is a slide from the Thai Student Association of the University of Washington. Believe it or not, thanks to students and healthy appetites and many of us who love Thai food, there are over a hundred Thai restaurants in Seattle alone. In conclusion, Thailand and the U.S. have a long history of trade that's continued to increase year on year. I believe that in the years to come, due to the direction of new trade policies, this will continue to grow. Also, soft cultural drivers enhance the affinity and connection between our region and Thailand. These will also foster trade and business growth. Finally, I'd like to add that as you'll see in the coming presentations, there are plenty of opportunities for Thai companies to take advantage of in our being an extremely competitive area for manufacturing and distribution. We have an ecosystem of support organizations that include the World Trade Center Tacoma, ready to either help you find what you're looking for to import, find distributors, or help you establish operations in the US. We'd welcome your contacting us if you have any interest in this. Write to me at info at WTCTA.org. Now, I'd like to welcome Jonathan Pan, Senior Account Executive at Cary Apex to the screen. Next slide, please. Awatikop, and good morning to attendees from Thailand, and good evening for those in the USA. Cary Apex has been in the business for 32 years in USA, currently ranking second largest in VOCC in the Pacific trade. Next slide, please. Our expertise listed below, along with uh, others, we're also in 51 countries and territories. Next slide. Carry Apex has a very diverse global business profile from supply chain solutions, integrated logistics, international freight forwarding, project logistics to cross-border border, e-commerce. Our diverse infrastructure, extensive coverage in international gateway and local expertise spans across Asia, North and South America, Africa, Middle East, India subcontinent and Europe. Next slide. Based on data mine stats, Thailand to USA trade for 2021, our volume is almost 2.5 times greater than our competitors. Next slide. Based on data mine stats, oh, please go back one. There you go, thank you. Based on data mine stats, Thailand, USA, 2022 year to day, our volume is almost 3.5 three times greater than our second competitor. Next slide. Next slide, thank you. Uh, top 10 harmonized codes listed below, and this is through Seattle, Tacoma ports, including rail to Midwest and beyond regions. The top categories increase due to manufacturing moving from China to Thailand especially in tires and articles. Next slide. Global container challenges. Long delay at transit time due to poor congestion at global seaports. Pre-COVID transit time from Thailand to the Pacific North ports range from 29 to 31 days. During COVID transit time range 49 to 56 days. Pre-COVID Thailand to Pacific Southwest ports, including LA Long Beach, 
range 17 to 21 days during COVID and 90 plus days. Next slide. And then there's a little bit more illustration, Thailand to New York ports, 32 plus days. And then during COVID transit time, around 58 to 68 days. And then also another illustration from Thailand to Savannah and Charleston, around 42 days during COVID, 80 plus days. Next slide. Ocean carrier faces many challenges. Uh, they have many skips sailing due to severe vessel delay at multiple ports. USA ports now require dual transaction when trucker picking up loads and return empties to keep terminal fluid. And also surge in imports in USA on average 20 plus percent to Pacific Northwest in 2021. There's also chassis shortages that plague the railroad ramps and the ports. Next slide. The outlook, global container shipping finds a new norm predicted sometime in 2023 to 2024. Cyber attacks are real. Um, we heard many terminals, our competitors being attacked and staff training and increase in IT spending is a must. Expect variable costs to increase. Trucker costs has increased and risen 20 to 25% year to date. Expect higher fuel surcharges in the weeks to come with the Russia and Ukraine war. Container shortages in Asia and trade imbalance create surplus and deficits around the world. Lastly, I want to mention that marine cargo insurance is a must. There is 160% increase in theft on railroad in 2021 versus 2020, about 300% increase in vessel accident in the last two years. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present Terry Apex in this webinar. Now I'd like to turn over or pass the screen to Tang Zhu, Chief Strategist Officer of Northwest Seaport Alliance. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you for your um expertise and thanks for uh, participating as a representative of Carry Apex, one of the largest um, uh, MVOs um, in, in, in North America. So thank you, Jonathan. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Mike, um, Mike Fowler and the World Trade Center Tacoma and the sponsors for making this event possible. Um, the Northwest Seaport Alliance is the northernmost seaport on the U.S. West Coast, located roughly 13,000 kilometers away from Lan Chen Ban. Our location, as you can see from this map, makes us a primary gateway for trade between Asia and United States. In addition to Thailand, we do significant trade with China, Vietnam, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Um, I, I don't know uh, of the 50 plus um, participants, how many of you have been to Seattle, Tacoma, but we offer very mild climate. We don't experience typhoons or severe ice and snowstorm. Uh, you see in other parts of uh, other parts of the country, it makes us a very reliable and dependable gateway. We are also the gateway uh, to Chicago. Many of uh, products uh, for Chicago-based, Midwest-based consumers are shipped through our gateway. It takes about four to four and a half days by rail from Seattle, Tacoma to Chicago under normal circumstances. Of course, right now we're still recovering or still getting out of COVID. Next slide, please. Think of our state uh, as the other Washington. Uh, I like to think our state is the brighter one of the two. We're not Washington DC located 
on the East Coast. Um, uh, Washington DC is all about driving trade policy, geopolitical conversations. The state of Washington is focused on making trade happen. Uh, we're focused on building global connections to promote mutually beneficial two-way trade. Washington state is one of the most trade dependent states in the US. In 2021, we ranked ninth as an exporter and were the 15th largest importer among uh, 50 US states. Our unique location on the US West Coast in proximity to Thailand and other markets in Asia puts us in the center of international shipping. The state of Washington is well known for its share of world famous companies such as Amazon, Boeing, Microsoft, Starbucks, Expeditors, um, Apex, <laughs> Carry Apex, REI, et cetera, et cetera. And we also have consistently our state being voted as uh, one of the top 10 US states of, uh, uh, as a uh, best place for doing business. Next slide, please. Um, I wanted to uh, make mention of our trade with Thailand. Washington state trade with Thailand reached nearly $1.2 billion last year, making Washington state uh, uh, your 10th largest trading partner. Thailand consumes a lot of Washington wheat and dairy products. Apples, cherries are also very popular, as I understand. We also export a fair amount of scrap metal, which is remanufactured into finished goods, much of which is exported back to the US. Seattle Tacoma is also well known for handling refrigerated cargo. Um, and we are one of the top five in North America. And as, as you can see on this um, slide, our top trading partners are really a reflection of our gate of our geographic location on the specific trade line and our importance as a US gateway for trade with Asia. While China continues to dominate our imports, we have seen volumes with Southeast Asia grow um, as more US companies looking to diversify uh, their sourcing. Thailand um, is now our number six largest import market, growing by over 62% since 2017. Thailand is also our eighth largest containerized export market. Exports to Thailand are on the rise. And I'm confident with your help, we will see your country break into the top five next year. Next slide, please. Thailand um, is the world's largest producer and exporter of natural rubber and rubber products, which explains why tires are, are our largest containerized import from, from Thailand. Imports of white goods, um, such as electrical appliances and home goods and furniture from Thailand also grew very substantially, uh, roughly 65% last year. And on the export side, uh, it is a mixed bag. Uh, I mentioned about scrap, uh, scrap, actually scrap paper this time. Um, exports continue to be number one, although volume has declined over time due to tightening restrictions on US scrap exports. Major advancers are wood pulp, minerals, and we expect that demand for materials will continue, will continue to grow along with Thailand's importance as a source for finished goods to the US. Next slide, please. 
I wanted to have a chance to show you the beautiful harbors we have. Um, the Northwest Seaport Alliance is a marine cargo operating partnership of the ports of Tacoma and Seattle. The Seaport Alliance is, was established back in 2015, um, is responsible for planning, um, investment in marine cargo terminals and other infrastructure for the gateway. This allows us to prioritize our investments and focus on building the capacity and capabilities to best serve the Asian Pacific trade. Next slide, please. Seattle Tacoma um, that makes up Seaport Alliance was the fourth largest container gateway in North America in last year, handling over 3.7 million TEUs. Seattle Tacoma are located about 48 kilometers apart, about 30 miles. Both are adjacent to major interstate highways and within 16 kilometers of the second largest concentration of industrial warehouse space on the west coast of North America. Importers, um, I think Jonathan would agree, importers often selected, select multiple ports in different parts of the country to avoid disruption of any uh, one port. And we are preferred gateway for shippers routing through the Northwest. Uh, we offer two harbors and many choices of terminal services. Uh, next slide, please. Now, I spent a lot of time talking about containers. I should also mention that Seattle Tacoma, the Northwest Seaport Alliance, is also a major gateway for breakable cargo and uh, rural cargo. We bring in um, more than 150,000 units of automobiles and accessorize them and send them to other parts of the US. We also handle a pretty substantial um, uh, amount of brick bulk business. Next slide, please. Now, I wanted to quickly spend uh, a few minutes um, on our Seattle Harbor. Uh, isn't this beautiful? Um, every time I look at it, I still find it's just um, amazing infrastructure. Um, Seaport Alliance operates on a total of um, um, 700 hectares of industrial land in Tacoma. The Seattle Harbor has roughly half of it. We have three international terminals in Seattle. And I don't know if you can see that. We have T18, Terminal 18, uh, our largest one, and Terminal 30, as well as uh, the newly opened Terminal 5. Uh, when we finish building Terminal 5, we'll be uh, one of the largest terminals in our gateway. I should also mention that both harbors, Seattle, Tacoma, have naturally deep water, Births at uh, international terminals are um, about 15 to 16 meters uh, deep, uh, able to accommodate the largest uh, container ships currently working the Trans-Pacific trade. We are planning to deepen our waterways to um, um, 17, 18 meters. Um, to handle even larger vessels in the coming years. Next slide, please. I mentioned about Terminal 5. This is a terminal we um, have just opened um, uh, in January. Um, terminal 5, um, together with our private partners, we've spent a total of more than half billion US dollars to refurbish this terminal. Um, this far, we have already received a 15,000 TU vessel, one of the largest ever to call our gateway. The additional terminal capacity will help 
uh, alleviate some of the current congestion and support potential new vessel services that many call uh, uh, many that may call our gateway. Um, as I I mentioned earlier, Terminal 5 is being built in two phases. The second phase will be completed in 2023 uh, with on-dock rail. We expect Terminal 5 will be a flagship container terminal on the West Coast when finished. I don't know if you could see on this graphic um, slides, we have uh, four largest um, cranes on the West Coast, new cranes on the West Coast we'll be adding additional ones in the near future. Next slide, please. This is our Tacoma Harbor. There are four international terminals in Tacoma, all have on dock rail, eliminating the time and cost to truck containers off terminal for rail transfer. This means efficient handling and fast departure for, in, for um, intact rail cargo heading inland to Chicago and beyond. Next slide, please. I wanted to make a special mention of Husky Terminal. Um, Husky Terminal, along with Terminal 5, I, I, um, I showed you earlier, um, are considered our two strategic terminals. We um, invested significant uh, amount of money into Husky terminals a few years ago and um, improve the terminal so that it offers two um, berths and that can accommodate two 18,000 TU vessels simultaneously. Next one, please. Our gateway um, offer a lot of uh, 21 uh, serv international services. We have Ocean Alliance, The Alliance, 2M, along with several the independent carriers um, that make up that 21 uh, vessel services. We have, uh, amongst the 21 services, we have a direct calls to 45 ports around the world. In 2021, uh, our gateway welcomed five brand new international services to um, international services, increasing choices and vessel capacity for our customers. As the closest US port gateway to Asia, Seattle Tacoma offers fast, reliable and frequent service to Lam Chamban and other major ports of call throughout Asia. Our location also makes us a preferred gateway for intact import rail cargo destined for consumer markets in Chicago and beyond, as well as agricultural exports originating from the Midwest destined for Asia. Trade with Thailand has continued to grow in importance and carriers have increased the number of services and upsized vessel size to accommodate the additional cargo. Shippers in Thailand using our gateway have a choice of two directly weekly services operating between Lam Chong Ban and our Tacoma Harbor. Of course, many other choices for transshipments uh, in Busan, Hong Kong, or Singapore. Next slide, please. And I wanted to just highlight the two direct services I mentioned. One is PN2 uh, service offered by the Alliance. Um, it's very competitive direct service between Nan Chongban and Tacoma. Uh, this is a great option for shippers looking to avoid congestion and other West Coast ports. Next, please. The other service, direct service, is offered by Zem. Um, it's called ZX2 service. Um, it is Zim's own ser independent service via our gateway that also costs Lam Chum Ban, bringing additional capacity um, and more options for our shippers interested in Seattle Tacoma routing. Next, please. 
Um, I also wanted to say that uh, even though today might not uh, feel like it, it's not necessarily the case today, um, our gateway is known for um, uh, our, uh, uh, our ability to rail cargo in a very efficient manner to Chicago and beyond. Um, under normal, normal circumstances, um, that takes about four to four and a half days. Our gateway is served, served, serviced by BSF and UP. And we do consider ourselves as the gateway to Chicago. Next, please. So not only do we have outstanding ocean and rail connections, we also have robust trucking community, roughly 3,500 trucks haul cargo in our gateway. Another advantage to using our gateway is the large supply of industrial warehouse space near and around our terminals to support transload, distribution, and fulfillment activities. We offer the second largest cluster of warehousing on, on the west coast of North America, most of it located within 20 kilometers of our marine terminals. And with convenient access to major freeways and rail infrastructure. I should also mention that average rental rates um, or leasing rates on a square foot basis are much, as much as 25 to 35% less um, than similar, similar space located near ports of LA and Long Beach. So we're more efficient, we offer more choices and we're cheaper. And I've included um, some of the retailers uh, logo uh, on this slide, and I bet you recognize many of those. So there's a reason why these uh, retailers elected to use our gateway for their distribution centers. Um, and because of some of the um, facts I just shared with you, um, I am, anticipating more of retailers coming to our gateway. Here's what I want you to remember. The Seaport Alliance uh, gateway in Seattle and Tacoma offers many choices and at a cheaper rates when it comes to shipping. Recent spot rates shared um, at um, a conference we just attended um, showing that Seattle Tacoma cost to ship to Seattle Tacoma is much lower than other West Coast ports. Next slide, please. I just want to quickly touch on this, and I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this concept that's foreign trade zone. Um, we have two foreign trade zones in our gateway, one in Seattle, one in Tacoma. These are designated sites located inside U.S. borders, but considered outside of U.S. customs territory. Um, companies can store, assemble, manufacture, and process goods without having to pay import duties until the products leave the zone. Um, so it's an added advantage to our gateway. Next, please. So when you think about shipping, um, I urge you to think about Seattle Tacoma and the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Remember speed um, with double S. And here's how I spell them. Uh, the first S stands for short transit time. The second S stands for service options in terms of ocean, rail, trucks, giving you maximum flexibility. The P stands for productivity. We have a very productive workforce here, on terminal and off terminal. E stands for, the first E stands for efficient and reliable services at a low, lower cost. And second E stands for effective and effective supply chain network with high performing logistic service providers. 
D stands for diversity in terms of your choice of harbor terminals and carrier partners. Um, need to move your cargo with speed? Ask for Seattle and Tacoma. With that, I conclude my part of presentation. Um, I think we do have a few minutes for Q&A, so I would invite, yes, Jonathan and, and Mike to join me. Very good. We uh, Let's start with a, a question from um, Consul Ithacorn at the Royal Thai Consulate General, Los Angeles. Um, as I think others can see as well in the Q&A box that uh, he thanks the World Trade Center Tacoma and the Northwest Seaport Alliance and the uh, Thai National Shippers Council. And uh, we thank we thank the, uh, the Consulate General for, for their support in this uh, event. Um, and Consul uh, Ithgorn asks um, that there are many, he suggests that there are many participants who are looking for alternative uh, sea routes to the US, uh, alternatives to the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach, which are heavily packed. And could you give us uh, uh, an update on the delays and congestion situation in your gateway. And I think that would be, uh, I think Tong and, and uh, uh, Jonathan would be most appropriate for that. No problem. Thank you, um, Council General. And thank you for, um, for your support of this um, webinar. Um, I, I'm happy to report that uh, Seattle Tacoma Gateway is a is, um, is an option, a preferred option by many, many, many shippers. Uh, we have been contacted by many shipping lines and by many uh, importers and exporters wanting to ship through our gateway. And the reason for that is because um, when I look at um, some of the latest um, information on vessels and anchor, when I look at the entire West Coast, when I look at LA and Long Beach, they have 54 plus an anchor. When I look at Oakland, they have 10 plus. When I look at Prince Rupert and Vancouver, the Canadian West, West Coast ports, they have 20 plus. And when I look at our own gateway, we have three. Um, this is uh, as of last Friday. So, while I think it's fair to say all West Coast ports and East Coast ports for that matter are all congested, I think we're one of the best performing ports uh, and gateway. So um, please feel free to reach out to me and to um, Mike um, if you're interested in learning more, if you have a specific request. And I will ask uh, Jonathan, please um, offer your perspective. Hi everyone, um, coming back, uh, good questions. I think uh, initially during um, quarter three and quarter four, there was a lot of cargo coming through all ports in US. And uh, the railroad actually um, was overwhelmed and um, had some mechanism to talk with the ocean carrier where ocean carrier was taking less IPI cargo into the Midwest and beyond. Therefore, uh, there was a little bit less vessel calling uh, the Pacific Northwest, uh, per se. However, within the last month or so, the ocean carrier have digested a lot of the IPI cargo at destination, and they're now asking for some IPI cargo, and we're able to turn on that uh, new route again, where we re-established that route. As far as Los Angeles is concerned, they're very heavily congested, like Tom mentioned, 50 plus vessels and more on the way. Uh, for them to digest all that volume in a timely manner is still remain to be very challenging. And uh, uh, that, that's all I can say. The Pacific Northwest port and terminal is the one the best and more, most fluid at this present time. Great. Um, thank you, Jonathan. Um, we, we have, um, uh, Vichai has reached out with several questions and Jonathan is answering them live. Uh, and I think you can find them right in the Q&A box. I think it's visible to everybody. 
but there are some that are that are yet unanswered and maybe they need to be answered offline i'm not sure but here's one it says uh, uh vichai asks please recommend a terminal or cfs which can use which can be used for distributing our lcl uh shipments to all ipi ports in the us um and i don't know is this something that can be done online jonathan or would you prefer to get back to them or tong I think we can um, provide the list of contacts. Uh, we do have a robust list. Uh, if you're looking for CFS, um, we, we have, I believe you might be thinking of transloading. We have a, a, a list of transloading uh, service providers. And in our region, we have um, essentially two CFS uh, or CES. If, let me read the question again, make sure. I'm, reading it correctly. Uh, I think it's CFS. CFS, CFS. We have a many and we can provide, we can follow up by providing that list. Great. Okay. Um, also, uh, Vichai asks, is it possible to waive? Oh, J Jonathan, did you want to chime in on that one? I think, I think it's handled. I think I sent uh, Vicha on the list of uh, the CFS already. I'm not sure if that was the one, but as far as AMS is not regulated by neither Seaport Alliance or myself or the ocean carrier, is, uh, it's uh, ministered and required by U.S. Customs. So I think that's going to be a little bit challenging for, for anyone on those panelists to, to answer so that question. That's the other Washington. Uh, <laughs> yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, they, those guys, they, they make it hard sometimes. Um, so uh, we also have uh, from uh, Pornpimo, we have in view of shipper consignee in the US, uh, do you feel there's a difference in Seattle Tacoma in terms of trucking uh, accessibility and cost of trucking? Would that be, uh, a Jonathan question or a Tong question? I can take part of it. If I don't answer correctly, maybe, uh, or completely, maybe Tong can help, Charmin. Please, please. Uh, please. Like I mentioned on my slide, co cost of trucking has gone up. And one of the main reason I found out is uh, before Christmas, as you all know, big holiday, biggest shopping holiday, Amazon was uh, poaching drivers and labor in anywhere and everywhere, especially in the Pacific Northwest. Um, the, the trucking costs more than double to triple for a port, let's say Port of Tacoma to Kent. That's one of our major hub for all the warehouses or Seattle to Kent, more than triple for us. Well, Amazon's willing to pay triple the price. We had to go out and secure trucking power at more than double of our prices. And then on top of that, the fuel increases, like I mentioned on my slide, already increased year to day 20 to 25%. If that was not an option for importers, then the other option is sit at the terminal and wait for trucker availability. Sometimes it's 10 to two weeks out to secure a trucker. Um, thanks. And uh, if I could just add the um, same, but a little, slightly different perspective, um, that is, um, Jonathan is absolutely right. There's a shortage of uh, truckers. Um, and, but that is not just Seaport Alliance Gateway. It is true throughout the US. It's true in, in LA and Long Beach. It's true in Oakland. Um, and it's true everywhere. Um, because there's a shortage of labor. Um, um, and um, it is a serious issue that um, I think US policy makers are looking at how best to address this. Um, Surface and Transportation Commission is, is involved in looking at how we address this challenging issue because we do need truckers to serve our gateway. But thank you, Jonathan, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I'd like to also add, since I cover a lot of my shipments and the customer I cater to is throughout the U.S., um, in terms of doubling, if we're looking at a $200 trucking rate, you double as 400 In other parts of U.S., 
doubling means from $2,000 to $4,000 for trucking rates. And that is not really a shocking truth, uh, especially down the South and the Gulf region. So uh, Seattle, Tacoma, even though cost is higher, but the total dollar amount is still much lower. Thank you for that addition. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Tong. Um, we have a question here from Congrit uh, Chantrik, who is our who is executive director of the Thai National Shippers Council. And uh, Congrit asks, uh, can you provide a list of contacts uh, for each logistics company in the area so that uh, Thai shippers can use uh, North Seaport Alliance services? You bet, we can follow up and uh, we will provide, uh, give us a little time. We, we have some of the lists ready and we might need to work on some other, compile some other additional information, but absolutely. Thank you for the question and for your support uh, in this webinar, uh, Congrit. And also, um, I think there there is a, we're getting close to the end, but um, I, I, there's a question from Vichai here about uh, whether or not with this a special service, a kind of like a contract tariff in order um, that, that the Seattle Port of Port Authority or the Seattle Chamber, uh, some sort of special contract tariff service, um, uh, a membership type of uh, deal. I don't know uh, if, if that, we may have to answer that offline, but I'm, I'm thinking that um, that's not something that the North Seaport Alliance, uh, are you aware of anything like that, Tong? Um, I, I'm trying to read this, uh, Oshim and I asked for special service contract tariff in order to space. And so what I'm aware of, and I don't know if um, this is perhaps what Wei Chai is trying to say that I am aware because of terminal congestions, um, many terminals, um, are assessing um, long dual fee um, for a demur on top of demurrage charge. I don't know if that's what um, uh, this question is related to, but I would just say this, that the, the Seaport Alliance is essentially a landlord corp. We are very much involved in helping facilitate um, uh, solutions uh, for our shippers but we work with terminal operators when it comes to um, um, pricing or tariff. Um, it really is prerogative of terminal operators and shipping lines that we do not directly in, involved in that. And I will say, Jonathan, you want anything to add? You want to add anything? Um, I don't really have any comments. I, I think that uh, uh, most of importers really need to rekindle or Kindle relationship with their service provider, whether it's an MVOCC or direct ocean carrier uh, relationship, that's gonna help you in the long run. And I think also it's going to benefit both parties greatly if uh, start establishing a long-term relationship. Right now, most of our, our business and volume is all Kindle from past relationship, current relationship, and hopefully future relationships. Very good. Well, uh, I think we've reached our time uh, at seven o'clock. Um, thank you, Tong. Thank you, Jonathan. And thanks uh, to the Northwest Seaport Alliance team that handled the organization of this event. Uh, to our Thai partners, the Royal Thai Consulate General, Los Angeles, the Thai Trade Center of North America, and the Thai National Shippers Council. Um, thanks to our sponsors, the Port of Tacoma, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, Tacoma Pierce Chamber of Commerce, and of course, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Until next time, this is Mike Fowler signing off for the World Trade Center Tacoma and the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Good day and for some, good thank night. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.